This is Michael Popak, Legal AF, Judge Angoran, presiding over the New York civil fraud case against Donald Trump, is a plain-spoken man. He speaks his mind. And if you continue to pressure him the way Donald Trump is day in and day out, you may not like what you hear. And that's what just happened in the courtroom just this week in the New York civil fraud case being brought by the New York Attorney General against Donald Trump, all the Trumpers and the Trump Organization trying to take his buildings, his money, and his business reputation away from Donald Trump. What am I talking about? There's been a lot of reporting about Michael Cohen's testimony. Full disclosure, Michael Cohen is a podcaster on this network. I've met Michael Cohen. I've been on his show. He's been on my show. I get it. And Michael Cohen's testimony was at the end of a three weeks of, let's just put it mildly, bluntly, other people's testimony. Accountants, auditors, appraisers, insiders, outsiders, current employees, former employees, all testified quite credibly about Donald Trump's fraud scheme, his uh, instructing senior executives that work for him and junior level people that work below them to inflate his assets artificially in order to be able to obtain more money from banks, from lenders, boost his balance sheet and his bottom line without having to acquire new assets or debt, insure his properties for more money, uh, go up the ranking of the wealthiest people in the world list, and then, of course, deflate all those assets back down even below the val- that particular value in order to save on his taxes. That's the fraud. That's at the heart of the remaining six counts of persistent fraud that are being tried every day for the next at least two months in New York State Supreme Court presided over by Judge Angoron. No jury. Now, The evidence that has been stacking up and accumulating has been overwhelming, of course, in the favor of the attorney general. I mean, that does not so much of a surprise. This is her case in chief, meaning she has the case for right now until she rests and all of her evidence has been presented. She says uh, the people rest and then it gets turned over to Donald Trump's team. And that's probably three months away. But she's already piling up the evidence And with even adverse witnesses, forget Michael Cohen for a minute, I'll get to him in a minute, adverse witnesses from within the organization right now or just recently departed or convicted felons that work for the organization in a financial capacity or outside auditors and accountants that have all left and quit Donald Trump and his organization because he's so unreliable. Those people have all testified. Documents have already been brought in. So... Let's bring it full circle to Michael Cohen. We've been waiting for Michael Cohen to testify. He's supposed to testify last week, but he's testifying this week. It's okay. Witnesses come out of order sometimes. Trial lawyers, and I'm a trial lawyer, we take it in stride. Michael Cohen was there to testify along with others singing from the same hymnal that Donald Trump gave instructions to reverse engineer his balance sheet. He picked a number and then he had everybody hyperinflate artificially inflate and cook the books to get to the number that he wanted in his mind. I'm thinking of a number. I'd like to be a six billionaire. What do you think I'm currently realistically? I don't know, boss. One and a half? Okay, go find me four and a half billion on my balance sheet. Oh, you want us to acquire new assets like what you're supposed to do in order to increase your net worth and take on more debt? No, just inflate the numbers of my existing assets. Just take a pencil This is the fraud, by the way. For those that thought it would be some sort of sophisticated fraud, stock market, options, junk bonds, offshore accounts, it's none of that. It's, I don't like two, change it to a six. That's the fraud. That's why the evidence has been so overwhelmingly against Donald Trump so far. Michael Cohen testified that not directly, but at least indirectly, Donald Trump instructed him And and Michael Cohen, having worked for him for eight years, knew what to do to inflate the assets to get him to a number that would satisfy the boss. Now, under questioning, he did say that he didn't have a knowledge of a direct instruction, but he testified frequently that Donald Trump, like a mobster, knew ways to say things unambiguously but indirectly to have plausible deniability. And that's what he was testifying to. But all Donald Trump heard was him that one line where he said, "Uh, no, I don't have... Test, I can't testify about a direct instruction. Oh, Donald Trump, all excited. They jumped up with their 
with the um, motion for directed verdict, you know, which normally, just for those that don't do this for a living, at the close of the case in chief, if you don't think the other side met its burden, because they have the burden, right? This is this. It's not criminal, but even in a civil matter, the party bringing the case, in this case, the New York Attorney General, has a burden. The burden is to show by preponderance of evidence on the civil side, meaning if you have balanced scales, you put a feather on one side, it tilts ever so slightly in your favor, you win. That's preponderance of evidence, as opposed to beyond a reasonable doubt, a criminal standard. And the Attorney General here is under her civil her civil. Uh, standards. It's not that that high of a burden for her to meet, but she has to meet it. And if you don't think at the end of a, of a case having been presented, you don't think that they've met their burden, you, and uh, you know, you always do this, you ask the judge to be heard on a motion for directed verdict, meaning you argue that they have put on their best case, they put on their only case, they put in all their evidence, the other side, and they have not met their burden of proof to prove the, 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 um, whatever it is here, the statutory violations, the, the fact that persistent fraud has occurred. Judge takes it under advisement, might ask for a full briefing, and then they rule. They almost invariably either reserve judgment until the end of the case, and then they'll rule then, because they want to hear the rest of the evidence, or they deny it, or they, in rare occasions, they grant it. But not in, you know, four weeks into a th- three-month trial because you don't like one witness, do you pop up like a Pop-Tart out of the toaster and go, directed verdict, motion, your honor, we like to be heard, which is what happened. Judge said, all right, coming up. What's the motion? Michael Cohen. Michael Cohen just said that he never got an instruction from our client to, to cook the books, to change the books. Oh, the case should be dismissed, judge, right on that alone. And the judge said the thing that I said at the top of the hot take that no defendant ever wants to hear from a judge who's handling the case as the trier of fact instead of a jury, which this judge is, meaning he's going to make the ultimate decision. The judge, and I'm paraphrasing, the judge said, there is enough evidence related to the New York Attorney General's case against Mr. Trump and all the Trump entities to fill this courtroom, and he motioned with his hands, the court reporters, uh, people in the courtroom reported. There is enough to do that. He also said, which is what we always thought, that the, the, the baggage that Michael Cohen has because he's a convicted felon, that he's admitted to lying to Congress, admitted to lying to another judge in another matter back in the day before he turned the new leaf, um, matters not as much as you would think in terms of credibility and evaluating the credibility of a witness when there's no jury involved. To a jury who doesn't do this for a living, that could be an aha moment or what Trump likes to call a Perry Mason moment. Oh, oh, he's, he's lied before. Oh, then I can't trust this guy. But to a judge who's paid to evaluate credibility and let things kind of, you know, water under the bridge for things that don't matter to them. He's just listening to the fundamental essence of Michael Cohen's testimony, the DNA of his testimony. He knows everything about Michael Cohen. Everybody that lives in New York knows everything about Michael Cohen. Michael Cohen is very transparent and public about Michael Cohen. <laughs> you just tune into the Political Beatdown podcast here on the Midas Dutch Network or Maya Culpa or read one of his books about Donald Trump and his relationship. You know everything you need to know about about. Uh, Michael Cohen. Michael Cohen is not creating new facts that he hasn't already talked about ad nauseum in, in various locations, books, podcasts, tweets, social media, whatever, right? I could play Michael Cohen. I could, <laughs> I could develop a script and I know what his testimony is based on the testimony he's already given. Did you know that poor sleep can cause weight gain, mood issues, poor mental health, and lower productivity? Sleep is the foundation of our mental and physical health and performance in our days. Having a consistent nighttime routine is non-negotiable. When I don't get enough sleep, trust me, you don't want to be around me the next day. Introducing Beam Dream. You know we've been raving about Beam's Dream Powder. They're healthy hot cocoa for sleep. And today, our listeners get a special discount on Beam's Dream Powder. They're best-selling healthy hot cocoa for sleep with no added sugar. Now available in delicious flavors like sea salt caramel, cinnamon cocoa, and chocolate peanut butter. Better sleep has never tasted better. Dream contains a powerful all-natural blend of reishi, 
magnesium, L-theanine, melatonin, and nano-CBD to help you fall asleep, stay asleep, and wake up refreshed. A recent clinical study revealed Dream helped 93% of users wake up feeling more refreshed, and 93% reported that Dream helped them get a more restful night's sleep. Just mix Beam Dream into hot water or milk, stir or froth, and enjoy before bedtime. I've personally tried Beam Dream, and it lived up to the hype. First off, it was delicious, and just a lovely nighttime routine. And secondly, and most importantly, it helped me fall asleep and stay asleep. The next day, I woke up ready and eager to take on all of life's challenges and tasks. Find out why Forbes and the New York Times are all talking about Beam and why it's trusted by the world's top athletes and business professionals. If you want to try Beam's best-selling dream powder, take advantage of their biggest sale of the year and get up to 50% off for a limited time when you go to shopbeam.com slash legal AF and use code CYBER at checkout. That's shop, B-E-A-M.com slash legal AF and use code cyber for up to 50% off. So his testimony primarily tracked everything he told the Congress, everything he said in his books about um, about cooking the books at the Trump organization, who was responsible for it. Alan Weisselberg, him, Michael Cohen, at the direction of Donald Trump using henchmen and underlings like the assistant controller, the assistant accountant, the assistant vice president, they implemented the strategy to get to the ultimate goal of fraud. That's what he testified to. And the judge said, I know Michael Cohen, and I know the good and the bad, and I will credit on those issues. But he also declared, the second thing the judge declared yesterday, which should send a chill down the spine of Kais and Haba for Donald Trump, it's, um, I don't see Michael Cohen as the leading witness so far in the case. That's because there was a momentum to the narrative of witnesses that the attorney general um, has used here. You know, this is again, chopping wood, stacking wood. This is a lunch pail, time clock, hard hat, New York attorney general and staff. They come in, they punch in at 8.30, they punch out at 8.30 at night, they bring their lunch pails and their hard hats and they go to work. They go to work developing evidence, presenting evidence. They don't attack the law clerk. They don't attack the judge. They don't attack Donald Trump or his lawyers or the, or the justice system. They just do their job presenting evidence, right? Like a, um, like a boa constrictor, just every day squeezing the life out of Donald Trump's case. And that's what they're doing. And so... If Michael Cohen went first, all right, maybe, maybe it'd make a bigger headline about the uh, quote, I don't remember a direct instruction, although it was done indirectly, which of course Donald Trump and his team have clipped and made, he doesn't remember the instruction about directly. How about the rest of the sentence, guys? But he's coming, he's standing on the shoulders of like more, almost a dozen other witnesses that have already testified over the last three and a half weeks. Appraisers, auditors, accountants, inside employees, current employees, former employees, ones that have gone to jail already for Donald Trump, like Alan Weisselberg, ones that escaped jail by uh, being granted immunity by the prosecutors in New York, like Jeff McConney, the controller who reported to Alan Weisselberg. Those people, the lower level people just doing their job in the Trump organization, right, who testified truthfully, you know, Patrick Bernie, the poor low-level assistant vice president that Donald Trump said in a deposition, he didn't even know who that guy was. That guy knows who Donald Trump is because he said Alan Weisselberg gave him an instruction in his office, Weisselberg's office, that the boss wanted the books cooked. Donald, You think Alan Weisselberg cared about how much Donald Trump's net worth was in Forbes magazine? He doesn't get an extra bonus for that. This is coming from Donald Trump. So the aha moment was not was nothing of the sort. And by pressuring the judge, all you got to do is hear you're going to lose this case. Because now the judge has two things in his mind. After Donald Trump violated the gag order yesterday, you're a liar, Mr. Trump. You lied to me under oath. You're a liar when you take the stand in the future to try to defend the Trump organization and your actions. That's bad. <laughs> second, second bad thing from yesterday is when they move for directed verdict, Claiming that Michael Cohen proves that the New York Attorney General has no case, the judge says you could fill my courtroom with the amount of evidence that the New York Attorney General has so far presented in favor of her case. And I, while I credit Mr. Cohen's testimony, he's not the lead witness for me. I've heard from a lot of other people. 
God, if I heard that, I'd go run and try to cut a deal with the New York Attorney General. But, you know, Donald Trump has painted himself into his own corner because he continues to attack her personally, Letitia James, calls her racist names, literally. I'm not going to repeat it. Go look it up. Um, And attacks the judge as well. So, you know, there's no goodwill that's been established by Chris Keist and Alina Haba with the Office of the Attorney General to try to get a resolution. I've dealt with the New York, the Office of Attorney General. You know, they're not to be trifled with. They are very, very good and sophisticated at what they do. And when they latch on to something, it's like a dog with a bone that you, that, you know, that you can't get, get it away from them. And you have to cut a deal. If you have to cut a deal, you're going to have to do it in a diplomatic way. You should have to show strength, sure, for your client. But you have to do it in a diplomatic way in order to um, incur some favor and get some credibility and some authenticity with the other side and try to cut a deal. Donald Trump is incapable of doing that, doesn't want to do that, and will go down with the ship of his own making. But now he's heard from Judge Angoron yesterday alone to tell him that his case is over. This is dead man walking for Donald Trump in the, in the fraud case. This is what I like to refer to back in the day as weekend at Bernie's. It's weekend at Donald's. He's dead, uh, metaphorically speaking. They're just traipsing his body around with sunglasses and makeup and a baseball cap for the next three months. But Judge Angoron, if he was asked to rule today, would be against Donald Trump finding fraud, finding intent to defraud, which is what the uh, last remaining element is. And he'll do it in three months as soon as everybody stops talking. As soon as all the mouths in the room, all the advocates stop talking, the dust settles, all the evidence is in for both sides, and the clerk has stamped the case shut, the judge will rule. And it's going to be against Donald Trump. It's weekend at Donnie's. And I'll continue to follow it right here on The Legal AF, the leading podcast devoted to law, politics, and justice on the Midas Touch Network and on the Midas Touch Network and its YouTube channel. Getting close to 2 million. Help it get to 2 million free subscribers. Uh, The bigger they get as a grassroots media organization, the bigger your voice is heard in particular. Join me Wednesdays and Saturdays on Legal AF Podcast. We curate the top five stories from that point in the week at the intersection of law, politics, and justice. And I do it with my co-anchors, Karen Freeman, Ignifilo, and Ben Micellis. I do hot takes about every day like this one, sometimes every hour. If you like what I'm doing, give me a thumbs up. It keeps the content coming to you. It helps my ratings, so to speak. Until my next hot take, until my next Legal AF, this is Michael Popak reporting. Hey, Midas Mighty, love this report? Continue the conversation by following us on Instagram, at Midas Touch, to keep up with the most important news of the day. What are you waiting for? Follow us now.